columnist with National Review Online right now. Here's what his thought is philosophically about uh, requiring IDs for voters. Columnist with National Review Online right now. Here's what his thought is philosophically about uh, requiring IDs for voting. Your ID to buy Sudafed, to get married, to travel, to enter a federal building, to talk to Eric Holder. Uh, bottom line, voter ID is something that is ha part of every American's daily life. There may be a few people who don't have a voter, a, f a photo ID or a government issued ID. I say let's get them one. Andrew Young, whom I quoted earlier, he was the mayor of Atlanta, former UN ambassador, confidant of Martin Luther King. He says, if you don't have a f an ID in this life in America, you can't participate in American society fully. You can't travel, you can't cash a check, you can't collect welfare benefits. Let's get people an ID. And the number is far smaller than people who claim, like the Brennan Center, that 25% of African Americans have, don't have an ID. That is patronizing. That is ridiculous. And this is the report that he's referring to from the Brennan Center, the challenge of obtaining voter identification. What do you have to say to John Fund? Uh, just because he says something's patronizing or ridiculous doesn't make it patronizing or ridiculous. The Brennan Center uh, looked at these numbers made a determination that it wasn't so much whether they had an ID, it's whether, they had, whether these folks would have an ID that met the qualifications that these states are putting in place. 25% of African Americans, 16% of Hispanics, about one in 10 eligible voters altogether. Uh, I think what is patronizing is, is uh, people assuming that we're, everyone's going to have an ID that actually meets these requirements. Uh, the other thing I have to say about this, about having an ID to get on a plane to drive or even buy cold medicine, that's true. And you know, when I want to buy cold medicine, I want to, I, I want to be able to do that. When I, I, I travel a lot <laughs> and, and I have an idea to get on it. But I don't have a constitutional right to do this. I may have to do those things, but it's not my constitutional right to do those things. If it's, if it's in, if it's constant in our constitution that we should be able to vote if we're registered, if we're a citizen, if we're legally registered, then the hurdles to do that should be more.